Welcome guys. This is one of the most special guests I ever had on the Bitcoin family. Coach K. <laughs> Coach motherfucking K. Yes, we say motherfucking because you also stream on Rumble. And on Rumble, you're allowed to say you motherfucking You say whatever the fuck K. you want. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I have the honor to have uh, met him a few years ago already in Bangkok. And we started to hook up. And we started to hook up even more in Phuket. Yeah. And I just want to share his knowledge with you guys out there as well. So I will uh, pop up five questions to him. The first question that I want to ask to him is, when did you get into Bitcoin? And what is your basic strategy to multiply your Bitcoins every cycle again and again? All right, so I got into Bitcoin because like the third time my friends uh, told me they were doing Silk Road and I was like, I'm not doing this stuff. I, at that time I was an athlete. I was like, I don't do drugs or anything. So I was like, I didn't see the value. And I uh, moved to Thailand and literally the first day I moved to Thailand, the teachers were talking about Bitcoin. And I was like, all right, if teachers are talking about Bitcoin, I'm gonna start buying. I bought some, forgot about it, went up, went way, way back down. I was like, okay, it's probably a scam. I thought, like I thought. And then I uh, kind of forgot about it. And then 2016 came back, they called me up like, hey, Bitcoin's like 800 bucks, I think at the time. And I was like, oh, like it's really actually made me some money now sweet and that was what sparked my interest and then ever since then I was like how do I get more of this asset um, I, you know 2016 2017 I was started buying a little bit of ethereum I started looking at like what other coins are there and how can I like use that to increase the amount of capital in Bitcoin and, and now obviously fast forward all the way into like the the cycles that I've been in what I've been doing this cycle uh, and what I did in the bear market was basically I shorted Bitcoin knowing that everyone was going to sell and it was going to come back down and once I closed that short around 16 8 I flipped all the profit from the short in USDT into Bitcoin and just bought a bunch and then just left it and since then we've been you know just basically on the moon mission that we're on yeah, I mean, uh, it's, it's really <laughs> good. times four already yeah so I mean you can use your profits from your trading to quit USDT and then that USDT when the market's kind of at its bottom or when you feel like it's at its bottom knowing that long term it's gonna go up anyways you start deploying capital into Bitcoin and that's how I've like basically up my stacks over the years and obviously buying and selling new projects and things that I think could have good value. Yeah, but that's that's like my second question because the second question, I got to know you as a Bitcoiner and then yeah. I also got to know you again as somebody that is really intelligent looking into projects, really has the patience even to look in the project. <laughs> yeah. Like I'm like, I'm like, I'm, I, I don't have the patience to like. And then I saw your list that you were um, like proposing to your team to buy, yeah. you know, to the people and I was like, how do you filter the project? What is for you the core ingredient for a new IDO, ICO to invest in? What is, one, what is the important thing? I mean, like, like, any, like any company, right? We look at the team. Who are the people that are behind it? What have they done in the past? Uh, you know, do I like them as well? Like, if, I, if I've talked to these people, they seem intelligent, do they seem driven? Are they just there for the money? Uh, and then it's like, do they solve any problems? Like, basic stuff, right? Yeah. Do you solve a problem? What problem do you solve? And if you can't answer that question very clearly, then you're obviously not solving anything. And then you're just basically a scam coin that's just trying to make money off of everybody else. So I look at that and then I look at like, okay, is your token actually needed and how you set it up? And is your token model make sense? So I really ask a lot of questions based on more on the economics of what the token is. And then if it actually solves a problem and the economics make sense, then I go, okay, this has a good value add. It solves problems for me every day, whether it be a wallet problem, whether it be like transacting, whether it be uh, you know making something easier, like using like playing in a game, uh, and then now ma mainly what I've been looking at is what projects actually would I use that don't really feel like I'm using a blockchain, that just feel like using a new product or service. So your top five when it comes to altcoins at the moment, what is your top five? Top five altcoins, I would say obviously Ethereum because I think the ETF is coming. Um, Link definitely. Um, my outlier definitely would be Osaka token because the SHIB founders are the ones who told me about it and I think has a really, really high upside. And honestly, it's one that many don't talk about but has the most amount of transactions of any blockchain. It's near protocol. Um, I really like them because they have a blockchain operating system. It doesn't feel like blockchain. You go, you log in with your Google account or your regular email or whatever and you just log in and then all of a sudden it opens up and you can start doing stuff and you don't really feel like you're doing transactions with it. So I like near for that. I like Link because it just basically makes smart contracts work. CCIP is going to be massive because it makes us be able to do things across chain so we don't have to have like 800,000 wallets doing 800 different things. So yeah, so that's why I feel like, you know, Link, Near, ETH Bitcoin, and obviously Osaka being a meme coin, which is, you know, really about the community and how much they drive value from that community into that token. Obviously, that's a meme. Obviously, that's a higher risk one. But from, from seeing the team behind 
Shiba Inu tell me this is their last finale. They're not going to probably be in crypto after this, or at least not be in the meme yeah, coin yeah. side. Uh, <laughs> I, I, took a, I took a huge, I took a huge risk, and I put 20 ETH in pretty much at the bottom. Started telling all my friends, all the fund managers I know, and like everyone that's trusted me, including you, Didi, yeah, has uh, has seen nice gains, and I think it's kind of just the start of that. So, you know, sometimes we look at value, and then sometimes we look at you know where is a good opportunity to make some capital. And then again, for your first question, then I can take some of that profit and put it into Bitcoin. Into Bitcoin, into yeah. gold of the 21st exactly. century. So we have four questions. No, that was three questions. Fourth question for me would be, why Phuket? Why are you living on Phuket? I mean, look where we are. Man. I know why. <laughs> <laughs> why Phuket? It's simple as this. I've been driving a lot of my friends to come here. I think I'm at like, I don't even know, maybe almost 10 now that I've, uh, friends that I've brought here over the time. It's just a beautiful place. The people are friendly. You don't have that like American, like negative, negative like yeah, angry yeah, vibe. Yeah. People are just happier, you yeah. know? And then you also like beauty all around you. You have mountains, you have ocean, you have yachts, you have catamarans, you have, like you basically do anything you want. We did like yeah. at the coaching experience, we even had like helicopter tours and stuff. So you can basically do whatever. You can live as cheap as you want and, and, and eat a meal for two bucks. Whatever or you, you could go to or you go Michelin to Maya yeah, or the Michelin star <laughs> restaurant and spend like yeah. 400 bucks per person to eat yeah. or 500 bucks per person to eat. But the point is, is you have the variety and you have people that are nice from, you know, the, from, you know, the poor or the richer, it doesn't really matter. And I give those people opportunities. Like I try to bring them up with me so you know i've made a lot of people wealthy doing crypto and and like i i was always like everyone's like why don't you just make the 100 mil for yourself like well i spread 100 mil around to everyone else and i still make enough money and then i can you know change people's lives i think the real resounding thing around the, the most successful people in the world and not just in crypto is that they want to change the world they want to change and help people and give back because if you didn't come from something like money like i didn't i don't yeah. know if you did but i didn't come from money i built everything myself <laughs> yeah. Uh, and all, most of my friends are like that. Yeah. You really like appreciate like how hard it is and the, the grind, but you also realize it's actually just work. It's just harder work, understanding something and just like going and leaning in on it and not being scared to trust yourself and put all the money behind you as, the, as an individual, right? That brings up another question to me. So I need to do one extra question, guys. Uh, two extra <laughs> questions. The first extra question is now, so what would you prefer? Bitcoin, $1 million per Bitcoin or Bitcoin 100K per Bitcoin, but freedom and no social credit system in the future? Well, that's a pretty easy answer. I don't know. I mean, Most like, people would choose more billion dollars. I mean, Bitcoin. look, like if I had a, if a Bitcoin hits a million dollars, it'd be nice. You know, I'd, I'd have more capital and more net worth. Ultimately, I didn't get into crypto because of money. It was part of it. It definitely is just the, the first driving factor when you don't have money is like, wow, I made some money. Now I'm going to get more interest. Then you start realizing what it does. And it's all about freedom. Like yeah. everything in the world is about freedom. It's about not having controls. It's about governments not telling us to shoot a thing in our veins that we don't agree with. They haven't done any medical research and people start dying that are healthy and you're going, what the hell's going on? Exactly. So I think 100K Bitcoin with freedom and everyone being able to still choose sovereignly what they want to do with their life is much more important than having a few people become more rich and, and basically accentuating the problem that we have right now is that the rich keep getting richer and no one has a chance to actually move themselves up in the world. And that's what's fucked up about the whole world right now is that no one can actually feel like I can actually move up because these guys, the gap just keeps getting bigger and Bitcoin, and that's why ETFs are approved, I think in my opinion, is they can control that that group of people. They, they don't, I've watched a video recently about a guy saying, not everyone can be rich. And if everyone was rich, this is why they do schools. Schools are there so that people go and are indoctrinated of this is how you live your life, you know, get a job, work, work, have a family, you know, be happy with your like one house, with your one car or two cars. And like, it's enough, right? And you're happy with that. But like, if everyone was rich, then no one would do anything, right? No, that's, I completely agree. That's why I have Coach K on my uh, channel today, because I only do collabs with people that are like same minded. Yeah, like, um, exactly why I don't have my kids in school. Exactly. Because I don't want them to brain, be being raped, brain raped, I call it by yes. now. So it's not like fucked anymore. They fully raped the brain. Well, I left teaching. I was a teacher before I was in crypto. <laughs> and once I realized, like, you're just indoctrinating kids. You're you're, the yeah. kid who was the worst one in my class was actually the most intelligent. He was just yeah. bored. Yeah. And he was, like, acting out because he's, like, so smart. He was, like, his dad has a business and he's running the business already. He's, like, 16, 17 years old. Yeah. And he's being told, like, to sit down and freaking read a book and stuff. And it's, like, the book he's reading Memorize is, is Canadian history and he's a Thai kid. And it's, like, why am I teaching these kids this stuff? And then when I taught my, my real exit 
of actual teaching came when I was teaching business and my students kept asking because they're curious, what is Bitcoin? We see you do videos online. Yeah. And I said, okay, let's do a, a three a three lesson video a, like course on Bitcoin. And on the third lesson, the principal walked in and he yelled at me and got super mad. I'd go in his office and he wrote me up because it wasn't part of the curriculum. Even though I could connect all these different pieces of business into what crypto was, into economics, into money, and teaching them about money. And that was like my sparking point. Like, I need to get the fuck out of this system. I'm part of the yeah. problem. You're not allowed to make poor people rich. You yeah. need to stay poor because else the world doesn't go around. So we just teleported into the jungle again because yeah. there was uh, naked women all over there like screaming and throwing panties at us and we didn't ah, want that on our channel. Beautiful Phuket, you know, huh? It's oh, beautiful guys. in Phuket, time aside, <laughs> we got happy ends and everything. But yeah. like one hour later, we're going to go to the last question. The last question is, so what is your target? So Bitcoin, Ethereum, Chainlink and Osaka. All right, Bitcoin target. 150k was always my target. I did that based off Fibonacci levels uh, using the retracement tool. So I think around 140 to 160 is, is a good target range. If we get mania, which would be like institutions truly FOMO, we could see it go higher, maybe up to 250. But I don't think that's like a realistic number right now. We'd have to watch the charts and actually see what's happening. So that a lot of things can happen. And usually our top is about six or about 12 months after having. So about a year after having is around the top, which would be a May 2025. If Ethereum gets an ETF, I, I predict anywhere between 12 and 15K. If it doesn't get an ETF, still probably around 10K. Uh, is a very likely target. It's only 3x from where it is right now. And I mean, if you look at the market cap of Bitcoin versus Ethereum, that's I think it's personally very possible to go 600 to 800 billion dollar market cap. Um, then with Chainlink, I think with it such being such a pivotal part of the industry, there are people that are trying to compete with what CCIP is doing. But I still see at very minimum a hundred dollar chain link, at least probably maybe a little bit higher, to like 125, 150. And Osaka, <laughs> it's a great project. Uh, <laughs> right now it's a hundred million dollar market cap. If we're gonna compare it to where SHIB was, SHIB at 38 billion, if they can, and the goal is to kind of flip SHIB, right? So if they hit, let's say 50 billion, there's an, uh, you know, that would be kind of a target. So I think anywhere between 20 and 50 billion would be a Osaka target if. And there's a lot of ifs there because it is a meme coin if they get the same type of inertia that Shiba Inu did. But these guys did it before. And like when I'm investing, that question you asked, yeah. I always go into projects where I made money with the founders before and they did something great. Because if they've done it once and they did it successfully, there's a lot higher chances of them doing it again because they know all the right people. They know all the right yeah. marketing agencies. They, are no, they know all the right ways to advertise. And they know all the mistakes that they make. So and they, they know, know yeah, yeah. so they can yeah. even make more profit. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, those would be the targets, and uh, yeah, you can quote me on those. If that happens, <laughs> fucking awesome. <laughs> if it doesn't, in any way, we're gonna go higher, and that's more important. In a year from right now, when we yeah. do this video, we will be much higher than we are today, and that's more important than anything. It's like not trying to go to crazy targets and get out of your own mind and be like irrational. Try to be rational with it and, and think, okay, and don't forget, most importantly, use risk management and please take profit on the way up. Don't try to do it at the top because you'll forget or you'll, talk, you'll start convincing yourself that it will go higher when it starts to come down and you'll hold and you'll lose a lot of your gains. So. That's uh, my two pieces of uh, nuggets of information. Yeah, I wanted to end the video. I already wanted to ask him, you know, what, get, what kind of advice do you want to give the people? But he already gave it. <laughs> the dollar cost average out around the top, of course, because don't don't believe all the moon boys that will say 600K and $1 million. There will be a moment that people will uh, start to sell and take profits, and then the price will start to crash, and then more start crashing will coming in. So there will be a dip, 30 to 50% probably yeah. in the bear market, something like that. In my honest opinion, coach, bro, I'm so happy I yeah, met you. Man. I love I'm you very too, thankful man. you made a video with me. Um, let's uh, give this video a thumbs up. Go follow, of course, Coach K. And if you ever want to visit Phuket in a Let crazy movie style, you should like probably visit the Coach K experience yeah. together with me. <laughs> but it's a little bit more expensive, but you will all be able to afford it if you buy some Osaka, Chainlink, Bitcoin, and Ethereum today. Next year, we do a Coke, Coach K experience. A cocaine here. experience. Okay. <laughs> Cocaine! <laughs> a cocaine experience? It's cocaine. Cocaine. What does that I'm not gonna cut that out, that's the truth. That's because there will be cocaine probably in the Coach K experience. <laughs> or some cake. I don't give a fuck to use it all. Uh, it will I be fun. <laughs> Thank It'll you for fun. watching, guys. Cheers, guys. Wish you an amazing day. Bye bye. <laughs>